put this helmet on your head, and uh, you can visit any year you choose. You could even travel into the far future. I am very aware of the preciousness of time. Let's imagine a warp drive that somehow defeats relativity, allowing us to travel at any speed. As Einstein said, the most incomprehensible thing about the universe is that it's comprehensible. We can definitely travel into the future by moving faster relative to everybody else. But there are equations in the general relativity that allow it. We have this one life to appreciate the grand design of the universe. There is still plenty more to find out. We are all time travelers journeying together into the future. When it comes to space, there's a problem with our human drive to go all the places and see all the things. A big problem, it's, well, space. It's way too big. Even traveling at the maximum speed the universe allows, it would take us years to reach our nearest neighboring star. The planet Earth isn't going to be habitable forever, and if the human race is going to survive, we'll have to pack up our things and move to another planet. Sounds easy, right? Until you realize the vastness of space, and even how big our solar system is. No matter where we're going in space, we need to travel fast, and not just only at the speed of light. We're talking about ludicrous speed. Some researchers have designed an impossible engine that violates the laws of physics, and another group of scientists are now saying a warp drive is possible. Is NASA really working on this technology? And what does the future hold for space travel? Consider this for a moment. Our closest neighbor, Alpha Centauri, is 4.367 light years away. So even if we traveled in a ship at 100 light speed, it would still take you 4.367 years to get there. We could use rockets to get ourselves around in space. But the big problem with them is the amount of fuel we would need to carry to get anywhere. But even rockets have their limits, including how fast they can push a spacecraft. We're going to need something that can generate some serious thrust and be able to do so without carrying a large amount of fuel because, in space, there are no gas stations. However, new study indicates that time travel in both ways is not only plausible but also safe. The question is whether you would do it. At its most fundamental level, time travel is all about velocity, space, and gravity. For instance, a second for a person standing on Earth will differ from a second for a person traveling close to the speed of light or in the vicinity of a black hole. According to mathematics and physics, even if we lack the technology to travel so quickly, this is how time works. We all travel in time. For example, we go one year forward in time between birthdays. And we all go through time at roughly the same rate, one second per second. Time dilation, a feature of Albert Einstein's special relativity, describes how the rate of motion modifies the relative sizes of mass, time, and space. Einstein was the first to recognize that time is not constant but rather slows down as you travel faster across space. What this means is that time is an illusion that changes depending on who is looking at it. If you could move at the speed of light, you would perceive time to pass considerably more slowly than it would for someone who remained at rest. Even astronauts in space age more slowly than those on Earth. In order to time travel, it is crucial to know how space-time functions. Now another human drive is finding solutions to big problems. And that's what NASA engineer David Burns has been doing in his spare time. But, what did he discover? Stay with us till the end to find out what David Burns is up to, and if this discovery made by him will let us travel in light speed. He's produced an engine concept that, he says, could theoretically accelerate to 99% of the speed of light all without using propellant. He's posted it to the NASA Technical Reports server under the heading, Helical Engine, and on paper, it works by exploiting the way mass can change at relativistic speeds those close to the speed of light in a vacuum. It has not yet been reviewed by any expert. Understandably this paper has caused buzz approaching levels seen in the early days. And yes, even some headlines claiming the engine could violate the laws of physics. This engine is out there that reportedly can push a spacecraft around without the need for fuel and this engine produces no exhaust either. You just plug it in, fire it up, and go. It's called the EM drive, or impossible engine because it claims it can do the impossible. 
NASA has also been exploring the idea of a warp drive, a theoretical propulsion system that could potentially allow spacecraft to travel faster than the speed of light. The concept of a warp drive was popularized by the TV show Star Trek, but the scientific community has been exploring it seriously for decades. The basic idea behind a warp drive is that it would create a bubble or warp in space-time around the spacecraft, essentially allowing it to travel through space faster than the speed of light without actually breaking the laws of physics. This would be accomplished by manipulating the fabric of space-time itself, rather than relying on traditional methods of propulsion. One of the main challenges in developing a warp drive is the amount of energy that would be required. The energy needed to create a warp bubble would be immense and it's currently unclear how such a system could be powered. However, there have been some promising developments in recent years. At first glance, it actually does look a bit like a rocket engine from the side. However, there are no openings in the device, and it works by bouncing around microwaves inside a closed chamber. That bouncing around of microwaves in the chamber is supposed to create a push, so to speak. This is a big deal because all forms of rocketry require some conservation of momentum. In order to put a spacecraft in motion, you've got to push off something. For example, if you jump, your feet push off the ground, an airplane pushes off the air, and rockets use exhaust gas to push them and whatever they're carrying forward. But the EM drive doesn't push off anything. Basically, it's a container with microwaves bouncing around inside it but while this concept is fascinating, it's definitely not going to break physics anytime soon. As a thought experiment to explain his concept, Burns describes a box with a weight inside, threaded on a line, with a spring at each end bouncing the weight back and forth. In a vacuum such as space the effect of this would be to wiggle the entire box, with the weight seeming to stand still, like a gif stabilized around the weight. Overall, the box would stay wiggling in the same spot but if the mass of the weight were to increase in only one direction, it would generate a greater push in that direction, and therefore thrust. According to the principle of the conservation of momentum in which the momentum of a system remains constant in the absence of any external forces this should be not completely possible. But, there's a special relativity loophole. Hooray for special relativity! According to special relativity, objects gain mass as they approach light speed. So, if you replace the weight with ions and the box with a loop, you can theoretically have the ions moving faster at one end of the loop, and slower at the other. But Burns Drive isn't a single closed loop. It's helical, like a stretched out spring, hence, helical engine. The engine accelerates ions confined in a loop to moderate relativistic speeds, and then varies their velocity to make slight changes to their mass. The engine then moves ions back and forth along the direction of travel to produce thrust. He wrote in his abstract. The engine has no moving parts other than ions traveling in a vacuum line, trapped inside electric and magnetic fields. It sounds really nifty, right? And it is in theory. But it's not without significant practical problems. According to new scientists, the helical chamber would have to be pretty large. Around 200 meters long and 12 meters in diameter, to be precise. And it would need to generate 165 megawatts of energy to produce one newton of thrust. That's the equivalent of a power station to produce the force required to accelerate a kilogram of mass per second squared. So a lot of input for a teeny tiny output. It is horribly inefficient. But in the vacuum of space, it just might work. The engine itself would be able to get to 99% the speed of light if you had enough time and power. Burns told New Scientist. And here's the other thing. Humans, not all of us, but still more than a few desperately want to go to interstellar space. We may never get there. But if we never even try to think about it, that may becomes a definitely. What's that saying? You miss 100% of the shots you don't take? Burns notes the efficiency problem in his presentation and also adds that his work hasn't been reviewed by experts and there may be errors in his maths. We don't exactly have the blueprints for a fully functional space travel engine here. What we do have is a piece of groundwork that could be used to develop such an engine. What we have is a dream of the stars. While it may still be many years or even decades before we're able to travel to other planets or stars, it's exciting to think about the possibilities that the future may hold. Who knows what amazing discoveries we'll make once we're able to explore the cosmos more fully. Only time will tell.
What do you guys think about this engine? Let us know in the comments down below. As always thanks for watching our video. See you in the next one.